Okay. So this is E3720 week 5 lecture 3. Today we're going to finish chapter 7. That is we're going to talk about static error constants, system type, and steady state error for non-unity feedback. Now cover some notes. Lecture 1 this week was the review session. So please take a look at the homework 2 solutions I posted online and also homework 1 solutions in preparation for your exam 1, which was, well, this is lecture 3, so I should be talking in past tense. But anyway, exam 1 was uh, uh, lecture 2. Uh, it covered chapters 5 and 6. That is, uh, reduction of multiple subsystems and stability using the right Routh Horowitz criterion. And also note that please read section 7.5, study state error due to disturbance uh, inputs. It's not that difficult. It should be, it's part of your reading for this week, which you should have already done anyway. Uh, but let's quickly finish this. It's not that difficult. So recall what we were doing. That is, we had a unity feedback system with a feedforward transfer function of G. And our output was labeled C of S. Our input was R of S. So we defined, so once, uh, of course, we have the closed loop system because that's how our inputs and outputs are related. Once closed loop system has been verified to be stable, we can define a steady state error using the final value theorem as the limit as s goes to 0 of s r of s over 1 plus g of s. Now also recall that uh, we for the step input, there is a unity step, r of s is 1 over s squared. So we have the steady state error as 1 over 1 plus limit as s goes to 0 of g of s. For the ramp input, that is r of s is 1 over s squared, we have the steady state error as 1 over the limit as s goes to 0 of s g of s. Okay. And for the parabolic input, t squared over 2, u of t, and we have the over 2, so for, or the factor of 1 half, so r of s is 1 over s cubed, the steady state error was 1 over the limit as s goes to 0 of s squared g of s. Whoops. So there's nothing new in the sense number one. We are going to define these static error constants as Kp is defined as the limit as s goes to 0 of g of s. In other words, the steady state error due to step defined in terms of static error constant is 1 over 1 plus kp. So this p here, uh, so in the kp, this p could re is does refer to position, that is error in position. So step inputs are used to quantify position uh, reference, ramp velocity reference, and uh, parabola acceleration reference, reference input. But anyway, so consequently, we will define the static error constant in velocity as limit as goes to 0, s g of s. So the error due to ramp is 1 over, well, it's not 1 plus, it's simply kv. And again, the v here refers to velocity. And finally, the acceleration is defined as, uh, that is the static error constant due to acceleration is square g of s, the steady state error due to, whoops, not ramp, parabolic inputs is 1 over ka, and again, the a here is acceleration, okay? So on the goal, basically, in our design is to ideally make, and there, there it goes, my thing crashed again, so let me close this, open it, and the goal is to make kp, kv, ka tend to infinity because we want the steady state error to go to zero. Okay. Uh, that's uh, definition number one. 
Definition number two is system type. This is basically the number of integrators in feed forward path. Okay. Therefore, type zero implies no integrators in feed forward path. This implies we have a finite steady state error for the step input. Yes, because we need at least one integrator in the feed forward path to have zero steady state error for the step input. But if we have no integrators, that means our KP E is finite. Okay. But KV and KA both tend to zero because our uh, because we don't have any integrators, our system cannot track the ramp or the parabolic inputs. So this is the other advantage of defining this system type. I know this type one system, uh, type two, type three, and all of these are beautifully defined in table 7.2 in your book. So let's look at that. I already copied and kept it ready before the lecture began. So here it is, the steady state error expression, which we just covered. Uh, the static error constant for a type zero system, KP is finite, okay? KV is zero, KA is zero. And so here is the expression which we just discussed. Type one means we have one integrator so we can track the step. We will have a steady state error due to the ramp and we cannot track the parabola, okay? So very, very uh, straightforward. This is on page 353. Okay. And finally, what if we have, whoops, mine crashed again. Okay, let me just close this because I saved it. What if we have non-unity feedback? So non-unity feedback, we of course first just check stability, but consider this very general R of S, let's call this G1 input transducer. You go into the feedback system. Uh, you have G2 here. Not only that, uh, let's call this C of S, and then I pick off from here. And this is H1. You have a non unity feedback. And the solution is very simple in the sense we can reduce this uh, system, simplify it, and it's beautifully done in your book. So instead of me like going, drawing it out and butchering it. So let's just look at, here is the um, simplification. So it's figure 715. So let's just look at this. I just paste it and we'll go through it. Here it is. Whoops. Also minimize that. There it is. Okay, so basically what we have done first is we have moved this G1 past the summing junction. So what we get, therefore, G in picture, whoops, G in figure B here is basically G1, G2. Our H is H1 over G1, okay? because we already have the G1 here. We don't need another G1 here. So anyway, having defined these two uh, transfer function expressions, we can see that the trick to making this unity feedback is that we can add, uh, well, add and subtract one. So here is our feedback with gain one, and we subtract negative one. So this is a, uh, all these transfer functions in parallel. But now what we will do is we'll leave this um, uh, follower, if you will, follower block in the, the gain of one, so that's over there. So then we can combine these in parallel, and then we can combine this subsystem in uh, feedback and basically get this as our transfer function for analyzing our error as the difference between R and C. And notice that's why in this picture here, we really need to simplify this into uh, this form because the error we have here is not is called EA. All right, that's 
how people, the control engineers call it as the actuation error. It's not the difference between R and C, which is what we want, yes? Different, the error between the reference input and the output, and that's why we do these simplifications, okay? So again, this chapter, like I keep saying, 3720, excuse me, is nothing new. You just look at uh, 3050 in a different context, or uh, aha moments, like I like to call it. So let's just do a quick skill assessment exercise to summarize all the ideas. So here it is. Okay. Whoops. So let's go down. So skill assessment exercise seven five. I want to look at the answers shortly. So here it is. Okay, for the steady state, find the steady state error, which we define as the difference between R and C for a unit step input, unit step, okay? So if you want, you can apply all the quote-unquote formula, formulae that we learned last week, but it's so simple that we can just derive it. Repeat for a unit ramp input, assume input and output units are the same, which is great, but first, of course, always check stability. Now the closed loop transfer function, uh, T of S, is given by, so let's call this T of S, okay, because if this transfer function is unstable, then C will be not bounded. So there's no, there's no error, there's no definition of error. So T is G, so if you call this G, if you call this H as usual, it's G over one plus G H, which is 100 over, so if you multiply and divide by S plus one, you, Oh, no, sorry, you multiply and divide by S plus 4 times S plus 1. You get S plus 1 on the top. You get S plus 4 times S plus 1 plus 100 at the bottom, correct? Uh, so, this implies the poles. It's a quadratic, but let me just quickly do this on my calculator. So I'm, since we have plenty of time, we have like uh, 8 more minutes for a 20-minute lecture. I'm just going to use Seesaw. Uh, right here on my calculator, which I'm, and I don't want to open up my calculator on my tablet because it's pretty quick. X plus 4 times X plus 1 minus 100, no, no, plus 100, Whew, that was close. Uh, plus 100 equals 0, comma, X. So if I solve for this, I basically get two poles as expected because we have a quadratic S1, 2 at minus 2.5 plus or minus 9.89 j so real part is negative this implies t is t of s or system is stable hence we can define a steady state error system is stable therefore mathematically speaking i can now combine the two transfer functions as g over 1 plus g times h minus 1 Okay, so I'll get this, C of S. Now I can define, look at my, now I can define my E as the difference between R of S and C of S, okay? So therefore, this is, uh, let's see, what did we want? We want, and the steady state error is the limit as s goes to zero let's call this g dagger okay of s times r of s over one plus g dagger of s remember we derived this last week so therefore g dagger of s is going to be 100 over s plus 4 over 1 plus 100 over s plus 4 each is 1 over s plus 1 minus 1 okay if you simplify this, duh, 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 let's see, you get a negative s over s plus 1 here. Multiply and divide by s plus 4 times s plus 1. You get 100 times s plus 4 over s plus 4 times s plus 1 minus 100s. Okay, you can just leave it like this. Uh, so let's see what the question is asking. Uh, he's just asking for the steady state errors, but I want to make a note. Note that... 
uh, when it's related to steady state error, our system is actually type 0, no integrators. And this is the most important thing, G dagger path. In the sense, you cannot tell, let's say you had an integrator here, you don't. You had an one over S here, you cannot tell that, oh, system is type 1, because this system is not defining the error between R and C. Okay. Once we do some mathematical manipulations, then only can we tell what is the type of the system for the error definition between R and C. Anyway, uh, the steady state error due to a step input is limit as S goes to 0. Well, the steady state error is 1 over 1 plus Kp. Let me just write it out. But since it's just 1 over 1 plus the limit as S goes to 0, of g dagger of s so this is step okay this implies the steady state error so if you um, put zero here so you get 100 over 4 which is 25 so steady state error due to a step is 1 over 26 correct so 1 over 26 i think the answer in your book is in decimal is approximately point oops 0, 3, 8, Okay, and let's see. Also, he's asking steady state error due to a unit ramp input. Okay, actually, this is where the type of the system helps us. Uh, since system is type zero, it cannot track a ramp, and you can do this mathematically. But I'm not. I'll do it as an exercise. Steady state due to ramp tends to infinity. You cannot track a ramp. Uh, let's see what the answer is. What the answer is? So for the first part, uh, you get 0 0.0385. Steady state due to ramp is infinity. And for part B, he's simply asking the error in the actuating signal. E infinity. Okay. So he's basically asking what is E sub A. Or what is the limit as s goes to 0 of s times e sub a of s? So let's look at that for both unit step and unit ramp. In the sense, we know that we want e a as t goes to infinity. This implies, which is equal, and we don't have to check stability because of the system because we already did. Limit as for finding e s times e a of s okay we'll play the same trick as we did last week that is we'll write we'll get an expression for e a in terms of r and g so let's do that now uh, r g and h in this case is going to be g and h but anyway so e a of s is r of s time uh, obviously r of s minus c of s times g h ah, the feedback gain is h we don't want c the sense c is g times e a of s times h is e a of s uh, therefore e a of s is r of s over 1 plus g h mm, therefore the steady state error as t goes to infinity is the limit as s goes to 0 of s times e a of s which is r of s over 1 plus g h and notice that you should always do these checks that if you have unity feedback h is 1 and this reduces to our result that we have been using so far so that's good okay now again it's a very simple matter that the steady state error due to a step input uh, let me so e a due to step is, let me just use this notation he's been using is going to be 1 over 1 plus g of 0 times h of 0 and it turns out this is basically e a of step equals 1 over g of 0 is 100 over 4 h of 0 is 1 so this implies e a of step is equal to 1 over 26 which is approximately 0 0.0384 okay or 5 whatever 0 0.0385 that and as usual just like the previous case we don't have an integrator in the uh, system in the feed forward path so uh, the steady state error ea due to ramp 
tends to infinity okay and this is i believe exactly what the book has good it's saved you need to take a peek at this so here it is same thing for unit ramp let's just check e goes to infinity okay all right so we're done with chapter seven so please continue practicing next week we will start the crux of this course that is tra uh, root locus so how do we we uh, root locus techniques designed by root locus so we are going to shape the transient response specification okay again please understand that there's nothing new this is just looking at 3050 in a different way uh, an aha moment all right see you then